Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here, and today you'll be trying to destroy your opponent's castle and capture their crown. But you'll first have to destroy the four towers, then knock down the entrance with a battering ram, and finally you'll open the chamber with a key to capture their crown. Over Siege is for two or more players, plays in 20 minutes, and is for ages 14 and up. Now it's on Kickstarter right now, so I'm going to show you how the game works, and I'll see you on the other side. With one set of Over Siege, you play as a two-player game, but multiple decks can be utilized to play games with up to 10 players. Today, I'm going to be focusing on a two-player game, and each of you is going to have a castle. And as you can see, each castle is going to have four different towers, it's also going to have an entrance, and you're trying to get into the chamber. So over the course of the game, you'll be destroying the towers of your opponent's castle, and the order that you destroy those towers don't matter. However, as the towers get destroyed, that player is going to be able to draw more cards, giving them more options throughout the game. After all four towers are destroyed, you can then try to destroy the entrance with a battering ram. And once that's done, you can enter their castle, use the key, and capture their crown and win the game. Now at the beginning of the game, each player is going to start with a hand of two cards, and on every turn, you're going to draw a certain amount of cards depending on how many of these blue card icons you see. At the beginning of the game, when you have a fully established castle, you're going to draw one card. So on your first turn, you'll have three cards to choose from. Now there's different types of cards. There's things called armaments, which is something like this, which is a catapult. And there's things like projectiles, which is like a stone. This stone will go into this uh, specific catapult, and you'll be able to launch this at the other player's castle. On your turn, you're going to play a card. So let's say we play this armament. You put it on either the left or the right side of your castle. You can only have two armaments at any given time. There's actually three different ones in the game, so you're going to need to decide which ones you want out there. Now if we look closer on this, it has a picture of a stone because that's the projectile that this would launch. Now after playing a card, it's going to be the other player's turn. But let's say it got back to us if, after we drew cards, we decided to play this one. It is a stone card. This would just go into a discard pile. And since we have this armament here that uses stones, we could go ahead and destroy one of the two towers that you use stones. And it makes sense because the catapult's going to go further and it's going to hit one of these. And this player would essentially flip that over because it essentially has been destroyed. Now on that player's turn, they might play a card that is rebuild. They would discard this and they could rebuild anything that had been destroyed. Or maybe before we launched that stone, they had played a blockade, and this would block any of the three types of weapons that could possibly hurt their castle. So if we had then launched the stone now, it would just essentially take out their blockade, essentially defending their castle for that one time. Now earlier I showed you that this is showing you sort of what is used here, but it's also showing you what can actually destroy this. Because if our opponent had this, and again it could be on the left side or the right side of their castle, it doesn't matter, and then they played a stone card, let's say this was played there a turn previous, some of the stone cards actually have more than one. They would discard this and they would do essentially two sets of damage. So they could actually destroy our armament because that's what this takes out, that's what that shows, and this is gone, and they had a second stone, they could maybe take this out as well. Now another armament you can use is a crossbow. On a turn you'd play this, and on a future turn you could shoot a projectile of a bolt, either one, or sometimes there's cards that you could use that as two, when you play these they get discarded. And of course that would take out either of the front sort of towers there that have that icon of the bolts on there. So if we had shot the double bolt, it would have destroyed both of these. Now keep in mind when it's the other player's turn, this, this player with the white cards, they always draw one, but now you see a half and a half because both of these are destroyed. They're going to be able to draw two cards in their hand at the beginning of their turn. Now at the end of your turn, you're always discarding down to two cards. So they are going to draw two, which means they're going to have four. They're going to play one and use it, and they're going to have three left. They're going to have to decide which one of these three to discard, and this has a lot of strategy in the game depending on what cards have already come up, which ones your opponents have already played, and things like that. Now the last of the three armaments is a battering ram, and we've played it here. Now remember, you can only have two armaments here. Now if you wanted to play a different one, you could play it on a future turn and just discard one of the ones that's already there. But let's say this is how it was, it's our next turn. We could play a battering ram with this, and it would go ahead and destroy that again because it has that icon on there, just like that. So now, all four towers have to get done first, and once those four towers are done, you could knock down the entrance with the battering ram, and then on a future turn, if you're able to play the key, you will win the game. 
Now, as I mentioned, a lot of the cards that you're playing are going to be discarded and you're going to be continuing to draw from your draw deck. But once you play a card to your discard pile and you have no draw deck left, you simply flip over your discard pile and that becomes your new draw deck. And you have to sort of know what orders did you sort of play things in. And that's a lot of the strategy of the game is, did I burn my key early? If I did, I better might want to burn it really early so that it's going to be, you know, one of the first ones that I get later in the game. And am I going to be ready to have that? Is it going to clog my hand up and things like that? Sometimes you're thinking of offensive moves throughout the game, trying to figure out when to use the strikes to destroy their towers and their, you know, their entrance. But other times, you're looking at what they have. You maybe know that, hey, they have a lot of stone cards left. Uh, they're going to be doing a lot of damage, so maybe I'll use my uh, catapult to destroy theirs because I know they don't have any more in their current deck and things like that. So sometimes you're thinking offense, but other times you need to think defense. And again, you can only have two spots for armament, so you're trying to decide which ones to keep depending on what you know, you've already destroyed over on the other, other side and, you know, what they might already have out there and things like that. Now, also, the timing of when to use your rebuild card is interesting because right now I would be drawing one and two because there's two halves here. Do I rebuild this now? Because if I rebuild, I'm only going to get one card. But if I wait till maybe there's another tower destroyed, I'm still only drawing two cards. One, these two halves is the second one. I'm not quite grabbing a third yet. So now if I rebuild, I'm gonna you know, get some more power in my castle, but I'm not reducing the amount of cards that I'm drawing. So some other subtle uh, strategies here in the game. And when deciding which tower to rebuild, you need to look at the armaments on the other player's side to see what could they possibly quickly redestroy. And you're also having those tough decisions as to which card am I going to discard at the end of my turn because where am I in the game? Am I close to being able to use this or should I really get rid of it now? Because if I don't, it's just clogging up my hand. When should I use this? When should I use this? Should I get rid of it? Which one do I really need the most right now or for future reasons? And there's also future planning and timing. Like if the other player already played their blockade and you already destroyed it, you know it's in their discard pile. You can see how many cards they have left in their draw deck and you know that at some point you can use your battering ram, but you're not gonna need to use it until that blockade card comes back into their hand. So you could possibly get rid of it if you think you're gonna cycle through your deck faster, or you might wanna hold on to it knowing that you're gonna use it at the right time. That's pretty much how you play at this point. We have everything down. Putting in the key would win the game. Well, there you have Over Siege. And as I showed in the overview, it's a simple game that's easy to learn, quick to play, but offers tense, tactical two-player duel. Now, if you'd like to see all the final art and components and all the different pledge levels available, you can click the link below me in the description of this video. It will take you directly to the Kickstarter project page, and I'm sure the folks that created Overseas would love your support.